Hey, at least I'm breathing I know it took a while Been looking for a sweet song A sign of spring A hundred years ago, Will and I lived in with the pilgrims now. We lived in Ecuador and we went away with friends of ours to an indigenous farm and spent the weekend. We learned everything about the culture, how they cook, how they work the land, everything. Now we're doing, we're going to do something a little bit very similar, similar to that this weekend. We're going to go to a Berber family and we're going to hang out with them. And we're going to learn how to cook couscous and we're going to learn about the Berber culture and we're going to learn hopefully how to cook tagine and we're going to hike and all this cool stuff. And this is what this trip to Morocco for us has been about. It's so we can't wait and the kids are going to get so much out of this. To get to this Berber farm, we are we're kind of navigation challenged. We've been a little navigation challenged since we've hit yeah. uh, Morocco. Our, our Garmin map is not equipped for Morocco because we don't have the maps for Morocco. Google and Maps does. Google is, Maps is, is temperamental. Yeah, it here. is temperamental here. So come on, Google, get I with know. it. So basically, the guy at the Berber house sent us a pin drop on a Google Map, which we can still see, but we have to like guess which way to go to get there. <laughs> so we're going to do our best effort in this in this journey of ours to try and get there um, before dark. Before dark. Dinner's waiting. So we just ran into what looks like an impasse. Detour. What does that say, Largo? It says what? That sign right there. Root, root de vire. Uh, Abon, what does root de vire mean? What? Diversion. Root diverted, maybe. I think so. D e x n v i e x n e. Our kids are fluent in French, by the way. <laughs> Except for that word. Except for that word. Apparently, they're either reconstructing the bridge building a new one or I don't know what it is but on the map this shows as if it's a river so I'm assuming during the wet season it's, there's a river here but luckily whoa this is really these roads these roads by the way are not meant for oh no a car for an RV oh my gosh that's a, that's a four by four uh, I mean look I at this I can't believe we're meeting another I, car I, they're like laughing at us yeah <laughs> what are these fools in an RV <laughs> doing here oh my gosh I didn't think we'd meet another human on this road this... oh see that dip, dip yep, thing right I there. see it okay. I see it oh my gosh go ahead oh let's go to Berber house she said yeah <laughs> Oh, let's go learn how to make tagine, she said. It'll be fun. We're going to learn so fun. So it appears that we've shown up and we have a greeting party here. This is the cutest thing. Really there's, cute. there's a whole bunch of kids here just wanting to say hi. Hello. Hello. So I'm trying to figure out if we're at the right place and I don't have Wi-Fi for the Airbnb to call it up. So I'm trying to figure it out right now. And I've got an audience. <laughs> and, and the local kids are so cute. They're walking us down all the way to where our host is and we are literally like in the middle of a rural village here where I think we're going to get the most amazing experience that we've ever bargained for. Don't slip, Evelyn. Is this the way, Largo? <laughs> this is big enough for all of us. <laughs> so we haven't been here very long and the kids are already making friends. I'm so glad they have some other kids to play with. It's really cute. <laughs> Um, 
I think that they'll probably maybe have farm animals. Ooh, there's a cat. And um, that it'll be cold. That's not one of my expectations. I hope it won't be cold. I have literally no idea what's gonna happen. Except that we're gonna make couscous. And Tejim, I think. But that's all I know. There's we'll a lot of other kids here. Do you think it's gonna be fun? Yes. I'm guessing it's gonna be awkward at first. But yeah. We'll see what happens. Good at this. No pressure. <laughs> it has the foam. It has the foam. There you go. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of food. I know, right? Wow. <laughs> like six. Mm. Do you guys normally eat this much for breakfast? Um, da -da -da. Sometimes, yeah. Wow. Yum. <laughs> So we slept so amazing last night. We, we, <laughs> I don't think that we've slept well I, since we've been back in the RV. I haven't slept that well in lemonade. In so long. And, and now we're being treated to the most amazing breakfast <laughs> that I can only imagine. Now, I don't know how people in the Berber villages normally eat, but we're eating as if we're like 20 people. <laughs> it's a lot of food. And he says that normally people do eat this much sometimes. <laughs> Now, I, I hope it's not all the time That's because good. this is a lot of food. <laughs> What's your name? So where we are right now is, is, uh, so we're here in the High Atlas Mountains and this is where a lot of the Berber villages reside. And one of the things that we're gonna do today is check out the whole area, um, you know, get in the RV and just roam around. We're gonna go check out another mosque. Now, we've always said that there's only one mosque that you can get into in all of Morocco, which is the one in Casablanca, the Hassan the second one. Well, there apparently is another one. Uh, the, there's one here called Tin Mal, which is a 11th century mosque which has been abandoned for, for a long time and is no longer operating as a, as a sort of functioning mosque, but you can still go in there and check it out and see what the architecture was like back in the day. So we now have our first guest inside the RV, by the way, besides yeah. a family member. <laughs> no, we had that guy when we got in the accident. We had him. Right. Yeah, but that wasn't on purpose. Perfect. I wonder if we should have like a wall of people who's, who sat in this RV right. before. <laughs> well, we haven't had that many yet. No, no, we're working on it though. <laughs> and I'm learning about the different food and all this stuff and Will's buying some kebabs for lunch and this gentleman here makes the women's outfits but the best part is the guy that who's not there the guy's not here but this is a shop okay but the best part about this is is that he takes the dresses home to the women the husbands do this and they get to try it on and then they pin it where they want it altered and then he brings it back and alters it and then brings it back to them so the women don't have to do any shopping I'm telling you this is a country for me so far he said that the women don't go into the village and get the food when they need it or not that often and they don't have to buy the clothing a lot <laughs> score score <laughs> Bonjour, Mr. Donkey. So we're gonna follow this guy all the way down to Tajine Land. There is there is a theme park named Tajine Land. Where all you do is eat Tajine. <laughs> I wanna live there. So our next stop is going to Tajine um, headquarters, right? This is yeah. where they make tagines. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not the only place they make them. <laughs> it's, it's the only place in all of Morocco. Imagine if this was the only place they made them all in Morocco. They'd be busy. They'd have a lot of tourists here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, this is a nice office. 
putting two together here? Or no? No. That's just yeah, that's just to hold it. Yeah. It's like a snake. Yeah, it, it doesn't look like that hard of a job. Oh, don't so say that. Oh, Largo. I'm glad he can't understand you, Largo. That doesn't look I hard. think it takes a lot of skill to get it even, and mm -hmm. so you don't put the food in it and things will fall out. So how many can he make in an hour, do you think? Um, it's not that because he makes... Um, he makes them in stages, right? In stages, yeah. yeah. He makes one part and then leave it to dry and then another part and then leave it to dry and then cook it and then bring it back to do the... Uh, some decoration. Okay, so these tagines that you find right behind us, these are the ones you find in all the souks. Um, clearly there's more than one maker, but these guys just, it's a handcrafted item. Um, he makes about six or five an hour around there. It's an all day grind out process. I just asked how long they would last. And he, you know, up, up, up to three years, right? So it depends, yeah, it depends, well, it depends on how long. Like, it can be six months. Six months, right. <laughs> Tajines in our house that list for uh, three years. Oh, okay. So when we said we were going to hang out in the Berber village, we didn't know really what we were going to expect. We thought it was going to be a house. We read some stuff online, but we weren't really sure. I thought maybe we'd learn how to cook couscous. We'd and see some bread being made <laughs> and, and sort of just like get the whole little and Cliff Notes version of it. And what we've gotten has been unbelievable. We're actually, we actually are spending time in a family's home, eating their meals with them. They're explaining the culture and the religion and the education and how they, they're amazing. It's amazing how they live off the land so much. So they, they, they have their own ecosystem, these guys. So essentially, it's fantastic. I mean, between just growing their own agriculture and then sustaining themselves with their livestock, it is they have zero need or very little need for outside it's, it's it's really i admire it tremendously and there's very little waste so for example they take the shells of the nuts and they use them in the hammam to heat it so they use it as firewood i'm, I'm, almost, I'm speechless in, 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 in a way that you know it's it's just i admire it and i just think it's really cool and really neat and you know i wish i had a better word to use for it but it's just <laughs> i'm so yeah, glad we did this yeah so. me too me I, too oh. <laughs> So it's our final morning and we're getting in such a groove here. I mean, there is there's a sense of just peace here and there's a sense of knowing that, that you know, being one with the community and one with the land, um, you know, you don't have to go out and search for things because things are right there next to you. So we are starting our final day with Avalon having the great opportunity to make the bread for the entire family. So Avalon, whether it works or not, whether people eat bread or not, is up to you. And we still love you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> this feels so weird to feel like how all this hair in my face, all this stuff. Oh wow, three bowls. That's a lot of flour. All right, Abs, make us proud. This is how you don't want to make a mess. This is going to be your job from now on in lemonade. Really, Mom? Even though we don't have an oven. <laughs> it feels so weird. <laughs> so is your mom going to do it now, how to cook or not? Yeah, we make it hot first. And how long does it take to cook it? To cook it? Uh, 10 to 15 minutes. And then I saw yesterday she flipped it over in the yeah. middle yeah, to she, cook the other side. Yeah, to cook the other side. And that doesn't just take as long, right? Color. Okay, just give it the color. Yeah.
So is it important to continue the Berber culture and everything? Like if, if you, if you, is, I'm, I'm just wondering, is it going to die out or <laughs> no, no? No, I don't think so. Uh, because uh, in, there are many um, associations who like fighting to... Um, to keep... To keep And this, then the language uh, in the school is Berber yeah. until a certain point, right? There are some schools now who are teaching um, a Berber. Okay. I mean, the village life. Do, yeah. you, do you see these villages staying like this or do you see them becoming different? I think they will, they're coming different. <laughs> Yeah, the, the um, not many people like like to cook a bread as we do yeah. anymore because it's too hard. Not so where do they get the bread? They buy it. They buy it. Okay. Not many people like to own animals because they need um, a lot of work. Yeah. Now, can anyone just move into the village here, or do you need to? No, can anyone? You just need to own like a. Uh, Place, uh, uh, piece of land that you can build. So you can or? you can actually buy the land here. Yeah, you can okay. buy the land. You can buy a house. You can buy. Whatever. And do you have to like meet them and see if you like them, or they no, just can come and do it? Just come and do it. So because what happens if you get someone you don't like? What if someone mean moves them into the village? Nah, you just you have to have, you have to you have tolerate nothing. it. Yeah, <laughs> you have nothing to do. That's like it's, it is every place, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you ever want to leave Morocco? Uh, no, I like. My family, I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm the only boy, so yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of responsibility, right? Yeah, <laughs> and I miss my little sisters, yeah. Too much. Oh, they're <laughs> so they're I very they're really really cute, your little sisters. <laughs> so, we're, we're finally now saying goodbye. It has been an amazing, it was an awesome trip 48 hours of just immersedness in the culture. I don't, I, I, I we thank you, yes, we messy, thank you, messy, thank you so messy. much. And we're getting a going away present that she made, and I absolutely love it it's gonna have to be saved for a house someday because we don't have a floor big enough in lemonade and I'm not gonna put it outside no because I don't want it to get where wet. are we gonna put it though oh we have plenty of room we're gonna find a place to put it we're gonna but get rid in of the one meantime, of the kids check this out this is <laughs> it's beautiful. made by hand and and she made it what, what did she do she, it was it Look, was made with with like t-shirts right no yeah. well this one is no this one is more like I don't have my sweater on but a yeah. sweater um, that you unwind all the all of this and then you, you, you stitch it into... The, and then and it's she does it so by cool. hand though, right? She does all the by yeah, hand, yeah. It's all right, just, I don't think we'll ever forget this trip here. Oh it, my gosh, it, It's such, such, a, never, such an never, amazing never. experience. I, I cannot tell you enough how these are the experiences that, that, that make touch our lives. Seeing the Eiffel, oh. Eiffel Tower, yeah, it's fun. But meeting people... Like this, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's the best. It's so cool. I've decided I've locked... Yeah. I've locked myself to the barrier. I'm not going anywhere. You have to say goodbye, Eiffel. No. All right, so final thoughts on this because we've talked ad nauseum about how much we did enjoy this and uh, yeah final uh, thoughts it was a great experience it was a great but experience. beyond that you guys are not going to see any women in the video or photography. Because in, um, in, the, in the village, the women just said They, they no. don't want to be photographed and they don't want to be on video and we respect that. There were some amazing moments of women sitting around talking and just, just moments that you just wanted to capture with the colors and the expressions, but we didn't. But we did. Number two, uh, the kids had an amazing time. These are the cool experiences for the kids because it's amazing. Kids will sit around and play hand games and they don't speak the same language and they'll play hide and go seek. And you never see adults doing that. I mean, can you imagine sitting across the table for someone who doesn't speak the language and Will and I are like, exactly. I don't remember how it, it went. Was, it, was, it was really just cool. They just took to each and, other and like that. And here's the thing. When you're thinking about traveling and you say, well, I don't know, what are my kids going to do? Or you want to go world towning for six months. Oh, but the kids don't speak the language. Kids will figure it out. It may be awkward for you as adults to kind of sit but back, like this. but the kids will get it. We've seen it over and over and over again in multiple languages, different countries, different religions. I could talk about this all night. I'm not going to, but it's magnificent the experience your children get from learning about other cultures. 
right? We have these like these experiences that we have that sort of are our watershed moments for us as a family, and this was one of them. Yeah. Now, it's, this is not like the type of adventure that we normally have where you see really amazing things, but for us, this was our version yeah, we of an amazing. I weekend. guess we, it's not like seeing, although we did see some beautiful scenery. We experienced some amazing right. moments, and we hope that we were able to sort of share that in such a way that you guys felt the same way that we did. But also to get you to see what's out there and how people live and kind of remove any um, generalizations about a country or its people or anything like that. Right. So this so, has been our experience so far in Morocco. We still have a couple weeks left. So hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button. There's more Moroccan Berber stuff Arabic, happening. All right. Muslim, whatever See, you want. It's all coming. See you guys coming. next time. And, um, and, and thanks for following us. This is a really cool adventure that we're going on. Bye, guys. Bye. Kipo Medes making me come out on this cliff to video for him. It just shows how much he puts into these videos for you guys. You better like it. <laughs>